So we did cover a few basics um, in um, Jim's talk, yes. Um, and so once again, you know, it's, a, it's a model view view model framework. Um, it's used for making um, single page applications. It's a complete kind of client side solution, but recently it, had, um, it can also be used on the server side as a mean stack. And mean stack is, and it's basically uh, using MongoDB as a database, Express.js uh, uh, framework on, uh, and Angular and uh, on node server. That's what it means now. Uh, I was actually suggesting mine that we should have. Uh, if someone knows uh, uh, using Angular on a node server, um, please um, share with the group. That would be pretty awesome. I'd like, I personally would like to see how that whole thing works out. Um, so there's some sort of uh, scaffolding for that, right? The I, I, I just want to talk about it. I yeah. haven't had the time to actually look into it and see what that act exactly does it do. But anyone who has experience with um, running the node server and getting lost into the node, if you, if you want to give it a shot and then come and talk about it over here, that would be pretty cool. Um, okay, so what frameworks help us do? They all help us in avoiding uh, any code chains. Everyone see the, the screen pretty much? Is in the back as well? Cool. Um, so they help us in avoiding negative codes. Um, one also present domain specific knowledge and data and application. The views as the UI and application example you mark by templates. Um, should not be existed such a model in order to observe them, but not to communicate with them. Controllers to handle inputs, flex user actions, etc., and applications based on the input the uh, controller or basic state of the model, but does not communicate it directly to the view. It's the view's job to basically observe the model for any kind of updates, um, which of course helps in separating concerns uh, within our web application. All right, so what is what? Uh, what is MVVM, the model view view model? Uh, view has an access to the complete model, which can cause performance and security issues. So the, so the MVVM actually helps you in creating new specific formatted subsets of the model, uh, which can contain logic and the state uh, for that particular view, thereby uh, avoiding, uh, thereby uh, avoid exposing the entire model to the view, which obviously helps, uh, which uh, results in security and performance enhancements to look at that. Uh, but it also increases complexity, or your, your code, you know, if you have to like, Create a view model for each and every chunk of your view. You you got this long, pretty long JavaScript file basically, and that's when you need a framework like Angular to help you out with that and sort of make things more faster. Okay, so uh, I found this on uh, AngularJS uh, documentation, and I want to share with you guys the Z of Angular. Uh, by the way, this slide deck is going to be online. Um, uh, I'll I'll post the link after the video tonight, and so you guys can check it out. I'm also going to post up some useful links. I think I can post it in the discussion page as well um, for Angular. And feel free to check it out as well. Um, those are the resources that I've been using um, a lot. And uh, just if you are really interested in developing for Angular and following Angular, um, and you have a Google Plus account, uh, which I feel if you're a developer, you should, um, join the AngularJS community on Google Plus. Uh, they have tons and tons of hangouts that happen all the time. Uh, you can, you know, ask people questions within the community, and people are pretty responsive. And you know, they 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 also get sometimes people from uh, Google Mountain View Office to talk about certain aspect of Angular uh, in, in a hangout. So you can ask the person who wrote, say, you know, built and testing Angular, who wrote that thing. I think his name is Igor. Um, yeah. Igor Minar. Yeah, so um, you can like talk to that guy and you can just feel his answer to your questions right there. Because he's in the he's in the hangout. Um, okay, so Angular is built around believing that declarative code is better than imperative code when it when it comes to the UIs and running software components together. While imperative code is excellent for business logic. So um, it is very good to write it is a very good idea to decouple DOM manipulation from app logic. 
this dramatically helps, you know, it, 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 it improves the testability. You can, you can test the server-side language separately using, you know, your server-side stuff, and you can, the client-side can be tested using, uh, using your client-side JavaScript frameworks like Karma or uh, Boca or Chai, um, so on and so forth. Um, so decoupling is a good thing. Uh, it is a very, very good idea to regard app, test uh, app testing as equal to importance, as an equal importance to app writing. Uh, and the difficulty in testing is, uh, is sort of like directly proportional to how you structure your application. So the, the, if, you, if your application structure is not that great, then testing will be difficult. Um, on a personal note, I have not started testing my app. I have not gotten, I'm slowly getting into the realm of testing and development and, um, and sort of like, um, in my day job, I'm doing, I'm, I'm sort of doing, uh, I'm writing the server side of the application and the client side of the application. So it, to me, it is sort of a little bit difficult for me to, you know, look at okay, server side testing frameworks and then client side testing frameworks. So I'm getting there, but test driven development is something that if you are a front end developer, is something that you should strike towards and um, sort of structure your uh, applications accordingly. It is an excellent idea to decouple the client side of an app from the server side. This allows development uh, work to progress in parallel and allows to allows for you to both sides. And it's kind of given if you have a restful backend, you can um, your application you can sort of repurpose it. Um, you can reuse that RESTful backend in a lot of great places. You can, you know, you have your uh, front-end web application. You have a, a, a mobile version or responsive web app, and you've got you can use the same RESTful backend for your 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 app developers can use it. Where you know if they're writing apps for uh, iOS or Android, I don't know if anyone writes for BlackBerry, but you know um, you can you can uh, RESTful development is uh, server-side RESTful development is uh, is sort of um, Necessary in the state of age. Do you mean anybody in this room writing for BlackBerry or anybody in the world writing for BlackBerry? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, it is uh, very helpful uh, if the framework guides developers through the entire journey of building an app from designing the UI to writing the business logic and testing. So that's, what, that's something that Angular strives for, is it helps you in, uh, through the entire journey of you start from designing the UI to writing the business logic that it also has in the testing in it. Uh, it is always good to uh, make common tasks trivial and difficult tasks possible. That's one of their um, goals, I'd say. Okay, so we did talk about all these features. We talked about the built-in HTML templating engine, the uh, declarative uses, uh, two-way data binding, filters, uh, model change listeners, dependency injection, uh, uh, support for REST, as jQuery is built in, they have a great developer called Batarang, um, which um, Jim um, that sh uh, showed us. Um, and then they also have unit testing and Android testing involved um, in Angular. Okay, so directives are basically um, just uh, how many people know about, say, Polymers? Polymer.js or so Polymers is sort of similar to web components where they uh, the idea is, again, you know, you can have your own directives that are sort of usable, and Angular helps you in providing that in, uh, is, uh, allows you to create uh, directives. Are they reusable web components? Gives you the ability to create domain-specific HTML tags that can be used anywhere within the application or across applications. It depends on how you design it. So, any uh, within Angular, any um, you saw ng um, ng what was that ng model ng uh, filter. All those are Angular directives. Anything that starts with ng within Angular uh, is an Angular directive. So ng is sort of their namespace, um, if you may. Yeah, I, one thing I would say is um, Angular. Remember, I mentioned earlier that Angular like reads the DOM and then takes it over. Angular sort of expands or allows you. It both expands and allows you to expand HTML. So you know, we all know the built and tags of HTML, not all of them, but a directive is basically your way of saying, I want to add some functionality, or I want to add you know, a, a view, you know, a look to HTML, and here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to create a tag, or I'm going to create a, uh, an attribute that I'm going to use with an existing tag. Right. So 
Okay, so um, just a hint for Mike and, um, you know, and your directives is sort of a big thing and it has to be a separate talk on itself. Um, maybe we can have that as another talk. Maybe mix that up with some testing, Angular testing as well. And yeah. Um, all right, so uh, time to go for a demo. Uh, let's see. What's funny is that my laptop resolution is now at 800 by 600. <laughs> um, so I can see.
um, it basically loads up over here. Um, this I, I was using uh, Gilman. Uh, has anyone used Gilman at all? Uh, do you know what Gilman is? So Gilman is sort of a, a, a uh, scaffolding framework, if I remember wrong. People who have used Gilman, can, you would agree or disagree, can, can you just let me know if I'm right or wrong. It's a scaffolding framework, basically. Building, uh, uh, it comes as, a look, uh, as an NPM module. You just basically say, um, human Ender, and it will scaffold out a basic Ender application. You can just start, you know, playing with it and use Grunt at the same time as that, and run your tests and um, run a Grunt server and you know see what's happening with the Intel on a command line. Anyway, so I basically then that's why it, it has all this basic default stuff in it. If I was to write an HTML page, I would not be writing all this stuff. But it's basically sort of accounting for it. Oh, if it's in uh, IE seven, then you know, say you're using an outdated browser, use Chrome, or you know, install Chrome frame, blah blah blah. Okay. So um, what is happening over here is that all that is happening here is. Oh, right here. Okay. So, all of this part right here, from here to here, there's no end URL all in there. So, the, 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 good thing, the good thing that you can do is you can have only a certain part of your application to work and deal with that here, and then you can, you know, your rest of your web application can be something else. You, if you, I don't I haven't tried it, but if you want to try it, you could, you know, have a part of the application written in the backbone, part of the application written in the backup, Part of the application version Angular, and Angular will be fine with that. I don't know if Apple will be or Apple will be, but I know Angular will be cool with that. Yeah. As long as you don't invade the NG namespace. Yeah, one thing is cool with that. One thing I might add is um, you reminded me that I have an app that uses Batmon, uses jQuery, etc., etc. Angular both allows you and sort of encourages you to just add it in gradually. You can take an existing app, I mean, you, it, it plays well with others, with part, in part because of that namespace. So um, if you just want to add a feature or two to an existing page, you probably won't break that page. So Probably not. Uh, <laughs> okay, so the only place where my Angular view is going to be is going to be within this, over here, within this step yeah, right here. That's where I'm saying to Angular, hey, all the views that I create using Angular, stick them in right there, within that selection, within that div. Everything on top of that is the nav bar that you saw in the browser. It said, you know, previous to point of home, search, reports, that's, that's the nav bar on the top. And then everything, everything below that, you can have, I can also, you know, I can, I can add something else further below it to create a footer or something, something else that I want over there, you know, or I'm calling the Google Maps API. Okay. Map show up, or I don't know, YouTube real cats. Um, so, yes. Are you using templates at all? Yes, I'm okay. using yeah, it. Yeah. So the way that I've structured my app is so that's the start page, and this is sort of um, built in a sort of a weird, peculiar fashion. That because our that's how our Mm -hmm. Sort of a service um, current application set, but anyways, on the left, if you look up right here uh, under scripts, I have okay, what's the components? Okay, so those are all the Angular components that I got when I used Yeoman. I got cookies, mocks, resource, sanitize. Uh, the ES5 shell is uh, the uh, for I think this one that's for uh, running Angular applications on Internet Explorer seven and below. <coughs> wrong, and that's when you use a shim in, in case of Angular. Um, anyway, so um, so that that's so the app.js that's my that's my main file. Um, that's where everything that's where everything is directed from. So app.js I'm initializing the Angular application called the PTS app. I have an, uh, I have a dependency that I inject uh, ng resource. And then I, in the 
configuration, I create routes. I basically say, when you go, go to the home page, pull up the home.html template. When you go to reports, and, and, and the controller that you would go to would be home control. Uh, when you go to reports, go to templates slash reports.html, um, the controller will be reports control. When, and in this case, where, where uh, uh, Jim was talking about the colon ID, and that's, you can use that with a URL, you're using that with a URL, but I'm basically saying, well, okay, so, um, the, the slash parcel, um, it will give me a list of parcels. But when I click on a parcel, I want the detail on that parcel, so I will route to slash parcel detail slash the parcel number. So I'm basically saying that, okay, when you get that, when you get that ID, uh, when you get that sequence, take that, and then go to parcel detail, uh, the, 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 the portion of the view that you would be loading would be parcel detail.html, and the controller that you would be using is parcel detail control. Otherwise, if you get anything else, just revert to the home page. So those are my notes uh, using the web provider for the next. Okay, so um, the two routes that I've written in this case are... Um, Actually, I wanted to just add something real quick. Sure. Um, are you probably going to talk about this? I'm not sure. But the... Uh, no. No, we're, we're, we're winging it here. So no, yeah. Okay. Um, what's happening, you, right, he loads up that page, and then uh, you'll talk more about routing. But what's happening is it's not reloading the whole page. When, when he clicks on a button, it's, mm -hmm. it's changing the URL. Mm -hmm. And based on that URL, it, it's actually just going to fetch that resource if it hasn't done it already. And by resource, I mean you know, home.html. If you look at home.html, it's filled with those uh, handlebars. Um, well, yeah. And it's going to replace that ng view, right? So it's it's replacing parts of your page as needed. Uh, so it's just that's more of like an app. So basically, yeah. the reports when 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 you when you grab the browser to go to slash reports, it's loading up the report in the table format and calling it. You know, I'm saying ng repeat. Uh, item in PPM list are parcels, call out the parcels, and then I'm basically saying for each parcel, um, you use ng and share corrective, sort of an A tag, um, well it is an A tag, but in, you have to throw in some Angular juice in there, uh, to basically say slash parcel detail, slash this parcel, and give that link, and then you know, pull in some other information as well. Um, so that's an example of a template. When you, go to, when you go to parcel detail, again, you're doing the same thing. You're calling the model um, item in parcel detail that parcels, and then you're just throwing in the information from your model. Um, okay, so let's see. Where are, okay, so let's look at controllers. Uh, let's look at services first. Okay, so 